Now we have in this sermon on the mount, I've divided it like this, the relationships of the subject of the kingdom to self in the first 16 verses of the fifth chapter. The relationships of the subject of the kingdom to law. That's 5, 17 through 48. And the relationship of the subjects of the kingdom to God. That's in chapter 6. And then the relationships of the subject of the kingdom to others. That's in chapter 7. And this will prevail when he is ruling over the earth. Now let's come to chapter 5. And here we have the relationship of the subjects of the kingdom to self and to law. Now, it opens with the Beatitudes, and I would have you note there are Beatitudes and not do-attitudes. It states that the subjects of the kingdom, what they are, and how they are to become this type of person. For instance, we'll just look at them. Now, will you notice, and I'm reading verse 1 of chapter 5. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain, and when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying... Now, you see, he did not actually give the Sermon on the Mount to the multitudes. He gave it to his disciples. And that is so important to see. He gave it to those that were already his And don't misunderstand me, it was because he saw the multitudes and their need, and this is given to them indirectly. And I believe that today, that men need first to come to Christ in this day when the kingdom of heaven is actually in abeyance. The present state of it is a place where the seed is being sown, the Word of God. That's what we're doing right now. I think that's my business is to sow the seed, the Word of God. That's our business in the world. Now, the day's coming when He'll establish His kingdom upon this earth. Now, this has a meaning for us, but notice what it says. It says, "'Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven.'" Now, the poor in spirit doesn't tell you how to become the poor in spirit. It just says the poor in spirit. And he here says nine times, blessed. And the Psalms, by the way, open with the same word, blessed is the man. And there's a contrast, I think, to the Mosaic law. In the Mosaic law, the curses back in Deuteronomy. And you remember that Joshua was told when they got into the land, that they were to stand on Mount Gerizim to bless the people when you come over Jordan. And then the curses on Mount Ebal. Now, the curses are given in Deuteronomy, and the blessings are given in the Sermon on the Mount, for he alone can bring those. Now, only the saved sinner today can know his poverty of spirit. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Why? The Sermon on the Mount makes some of these fellows, as this man I referred to, why it makes them boast, for he certainly was boasting. This was his religion. He's trying to kid himself, and he tried to kid me that he was keeping it. He wasn't keeping it at all. It it just made a hypocrite out of him, and we got a lot of those. I played golf in Tulsa, Oklahoma, with a very wealthy man there. He'd been in the oil business. He told me, he said, I forget how many years, he said, I went to church just like the rest of the hypocrites, and I was one of them, talking about keeping the Sermon on the Mount. Then he said, one day I found out I was a lost sinner on the way to hell, and I turned to Jesus Christ, and he saved me. May I say, friends, don't be taken in by this type of thing. Only the Spirit of God can reveal to you your poverty of spirit. These are the citizens of the kingdom of heaven. It doesn't tell you how to become one. These are already citizens of the kingdom of heaven. And to know your poverty of spirit, Paul says, being poor, we make many rich. (laughs) That's spiritual riches, by the way. And He gives us that over in 2 Corinthians, the 6th chapter. And I'll not take time to turn to that today. He says, "...as poor, yet making many rich." And that's spiritually. 
And you'll notice here, the next one is, "'Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted.'" And by the way, you'll find all of these given elsewhere. The poor in spirits given in Zephaniah 3.12. "'Blessed are they that mourn, they'll be comforted.'" In Micah 7, 1. This is a state, you see. "'Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth.'" And that's Psalm 37.11. And friends, the meek are not inheriting the earth today. I'm sure you recognize that. They are the ones that are not inheriting it right now. So apparently the Sermon on the Mount's not in effect today. Now, when he's reigning, the meek will inherit the earth. And by the way, how do you become meek? This man I talked to wasn't meek. How do you become meek? Well, you and I can't do it. Our Lord was meek and lowly. He'll inherit all things. Now, we are the heirs of God and joint heirs of Christ. We're told the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, and among other things is meekness. Only the Spirit of God can make you meek when you try to do it and you do accomplish it, even if you did what you don't. But if you did, you'd be proud of yourself, wouldn't you? And out goes your meekness. You just wouldn't have it at all. How wonderful this Sermon on the Mount is, but let's interpret it accurately, friends.